Hey, this is Tommy Victor from Prong and Danzig, and you're watching Impact Channel. Tommy Victor from Prong and Danzig. Okay. Hey man. And congratulations on the absolutes. Thanks. Despite you release the albums more often nowadays than ever before, it seems that you are really on fire. Where is the key to it coming from? It comes from the label and our management telling me that, that I got to do it. I mean, otherwise, if it was up to me, I'd be sitting around at a swimming pool and uh, you know uh, watching uh, baseball games and stuff. So, I mean, I just do what they tell me to do, and it seems to be working out. It's been a lot of luck. What's your personal favorite from the new record? Oh, I like the whole record. It's amazing. I mean, um, you know, like, like Do Nothing is, is fantastic because it's something that, you know, I wanted to do for a really long time is, um, you know, get one of like a classic, just a good song, you know, like that could be uh, listened to by anybody. So uh, I'm really happy about that one. And then there's some great thrashers on there too, you know, The Sense of Ease, which we play tonight. This ultra fast song that people are going crazy over and, uh, you know, and Cut and Dry is you know, a huge success, like in America on radio, and it's been doing really well. And what has his input a lot recently? Did you take any lessons? No, I just learned from Steve Evitz. He, he taught me a lot. I mean, we worked on Carved Into Stone with him, and um, I never really had any direction from any other producers. They were like, oh, Tommy, just go in and whatever, and no one ever showed me what to do. And I never really, you know, had anybody coaching me. So Steve had a, had a really big part in, in my vocal progress a lot. Mm -hmm. He formed from 30 years ago. Uh, do you have any special plans for the celebration? Nah, you know, like my manager said something that was talking about that, and I was like, it's just not me, you know, like, um, uh, it's, Prong has gone through so many changes, etc. It's like, I'd rather just focus on the new records and, you know, like, treat it as like, you know, every day as like it's a new band, and I, I'm, I'm not really concerned too much with the, 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 you know, like how many years, it doesn't really mean anything to me. Plans to release the early records? Um, they're around. I mean, not the prim not primitive origins and force fed. No, um, uh, there's talk about a, a, a remix, remastered Power of the Damager record. So um, that's something that looks like a, a vinyl only release on that. <clears throat> And uh, 2016 is also about the elections in the United States. What do you think is going to win? Uh, Hillary Clinton will win. Uh, it, it does it. it, it Th that was decided two years ago. It's, does it, you know, I mean, uh, I, most people in America and everywhere realize it's just a TV show and no one, there's no real choice in the matter. It's been decided a long time ago. Mm -hmm. and in general, how do you see your country at the moment, especially if you compare the situation with the time when you were a kid? It's about the same. It, it's run by. Uh, a small group of corporate leaders that want to control the world and you know America is their big stomping ground for that so um, it's, 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 it hasn't been a democracy I don't know if it ever was so it's it's uh, it's run by you know people with a lot of money you know it's, it's the way it is and if you have a chance to be in charge for that, what would you do with your power? Ugh, I, 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 I'm, I would let everyone do what the hell they wanted to do, probably, and, you know, I, I would not tell anybody what to do, just, um, you know, let everybody do whatever the hell they wanted to do. Mm. And by this time, generations have grown up in this digital world. What, uh, what do you think? In what way did it change the people? Uh, the most annoying thing about it uh, is, is, like, if you go out to dinner with kids in America or you know you go to a social event and everyone's on their phones it's like they're, they're, you have people around you and then they're talking to somebody else that's not there so that doesn't make any sense to me so it, it's like they're, they're distracted from a personal um, you know uh, relationship with people it's all a, it's all via text message and Facebook so you know uh, yeah, on the other hand, I think that, that people are more informed and uh, more in touch with uh, current events and uh, uh, I think there's a lot of benefits towards, you know, like this digital technology as well. Now, 
And what about the music fans? Don't you think that it kind of degraded the appreciation of music and art? No, I don't think so at all. I, you know, I think like with the advent of stream and with Spotify, I think it's broadened people's music uh, knowledge and horizons, and you know, it, it's easy. Uh, it's a lot easier to be familiar with you know, younger bands and a lot of different music. There's just a lot more choices and, uh, you know, uh, you know it, it, unfortunately I don't think people have a lot of leisure time in order to, to, to appreciate it a lot, but uh, uh, I think that, uh, uh, the, and art too is, is uh, more readily available, <clears throat> you know, to, uh, to see, like, you know, like, I mean, I know like in, in, uh, in Los Angeles now, like, you know, there's like an explosion with, with people wanting to go to museums and, you know, be involved in the art world has just grown huge in, in the last 10 years. You're going to turn 50 this year. Do you have any special plans for the celebration? No. No, like I said, my, my, my idea of a good time is like, is, is you know, being at a, a swimming pool and we're, you know, out in the sun and just hanging out. Uh, you know, I don't drink or do drugs and... You know, I don't do any partying anymore, so it's like, uh, be mellow, hang out with somebody, a couple of close friends, that's it. How would you summarize your career with all the experiences behind you? It's been amazing. It's, a, it's an unbelievable career. I, I, I've been blessed. I'm a very lucky person, you know. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic voyage. If you could meet the teenager, Tommy Victor, what would you say to yourself? Uh, I would trust myself more and um, uh, I would probably uh, not have as much peer pressure and uh, you know, I, like whatever I was doing I wouldn't not be insecure about like like even like you were talking about like like learning how to play an instrument like I would have to uh, uh, like spend hours because I played bass as a kid, but like I was so into music, and I I would have records, and I'd be sitting in in my room and like all day long by myself, and like listening to stuff and figuring out stuff, and like you know like you know kids in the neighborhood were making fun of me, and my mother was like she she thought it was out, she hated it, you know. So uh, you know I started getting insecure about that. I was like you know I felt that you know I was some. Well, I guess I was a weirdo, but, you know, it paid off in the end, so... If you were someone a historical person, or a mythical creature, or a child, would you A mythical creature? Or a historical person? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, uh, I would say, like, uh, like Daniel Boone, or somebody out in the frontier, like, you know, just uh, going out in, into the wilderness and, uh, you know, uh, creating a new world in, in the West, in America, you know, that would be scary but challenging and, and cool, you know. Fighting buffalo and Indians and this stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay, back to music. Um, what's your feature other project for Trinity Race? That, I, I'm, I'm like a, a side guy with that. I mean, if time permitting, I mean, Erie Locke worked with me a little on No Absolutes, and uh, he's the primary guy with Primitive Race, so I mean, if, if uh, we continue to do it, he, they're going to have to come up with more money to do it, but, you know, I, I wouldn't mind writing with him more and, and making it a more solid uh, uh, construction. You know, I also have another side project with, with Mike Schleibaum from Darkest Hour. That's taking slow, but we have, like, ten songs, and it's it's a it's more like an in-flames type metal kind of thing. Uh, we'll see how that goes, too. But, uh, you know, right now, Prong is just like, you know, it's really, we're really busy, and like, it's hard enough fitting a couple of dancing shows in here and there, so. We've been working on it for like three years now, so uh, maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe like the last two years. So, uh, you know, Glenn writes all the stuff, and you know, Glenn, it's all his thing, you know, like, you know, Glenn and I are like close friends, so, you know, he just calls me up and he goes, ah, you want to come in the studio? I got, the, you know, I'm like, yeah, man, I'll come down. And like, we just work on it in bits and pieces, so. We need to try yourself in a different genre. I don't know. I don't know about genres. I mean, like, I only can do what I can do. Like, you know, and prong is sort of what I can do. So it's, you know, like, um, I'm not really interested. I mean, what prong is, and is really what I really want to do, you know, so.
I really don't have. I mean, and then like I get a couple of little side things here and there, like I, you know, like talk about more, more like uh, industrial music, like you know, uh, I'm interested in, um, like I think, uh, if it's done right, if if it's if the songs are really good, uh, you could you could do something more electronic, like you know, the Depeche Mode or something where. But the songs have to be good. Like industrial fell off the map because it was just relying on samples and noise, and 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 there was no songs anymore. So you know, like you know, like you know, that's what's great about Nine Inch Nails. Like you know, he had all, all excellent songs, and no one else has been able to really do that. Did you compose a soundtrack? If you have a chance? Nah, nah, I'm not. I. I uh, I'd have to spend like a year, like back into. Uh, sitting in front of my computer and getting, uh, you know, getting knowledgeable on, you know, programming and and that and that, that I'm not really excited about doing that because it's like uh, uh, I enjoy now like working with another person. Uh, I don't like isolating in, in front of a computer to do music. It's it doesn't interest me anymore. You know, it's like uh, not that every day I, I like you know like getting. If I have a partner, yeah, like, you know, and we're in there in the studio, like Chris Collier, I worked with No Absolutes with, then we could relate, have like, a, you know, some, some dialogue about where things are going, but like, having myself there with being by myself in, on a computer screen, is just like, ugh, it, it doesn't interest me. If the atmosphere of Bronx music could be transferred into a movie, what would it be like? I would think it would be like songs, like do nothing, like you know, like uh, more like just uh, anthems, uh, instrumental music. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's all been done already. You know, so it, it's like, you know, um, uh, you know, like you, I'm not interested in sound uh, experimentation that much. You know, it's like, you know, it, it's it, I'd rather have like songs. If you're not be a musician, how would you express yourself? Uh, there's a lot of ways people can express themselves, like whether like a court lawyer uh, or uh, something that's communicative, whether verbally uh, or you know painting. Uh, that's about it. I mean, there's either two ways to do it, like visually or verbally. Uh, um, you know, I'm not interested in filmmaking or uh, things of that nature that much. Uh, it, you know, you could express yourself athletically. I'm not like you know good enough to do that. You know, like you know people that are do um, you know like a football player is expressing himself. You know, with his moves, etc. So you know, there's a lot of different ways. I, well, I have I'd have to work within my limitations. So um, you know, uh, you know, so I mean, me would probably you know something verbal, like you know, like or some you know, something that would have a dialogue with somebody. You know. As you mentioned before, you originally started to play a bass guitar, and now there are plenty of jokes around, you know, the, the, about the bass players and the bass guitars in general. Right. And uh, do you think the reputation, the low reputation of bass players, is kind of reasonable nowadays? Well, I mean, it, it is. It is like I'm very fortunate because like Jason is a is a great musician. Like you know, he's a he's a great bass player and he plays acoustic guitar great and. You know, he's he's just got it. You know, either you have it or you don't. You know, and Paul Raven was like that too, where, you know, he was just like, you know, you, you throw him in a room with a drummer and a guitar player, and he's fantastic. You know, like a lot of guys, they try to do too much. So it's like, you know, they, you get these guys that are just, it, it, it's. It, it, I played with a lot of bass players, and 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 either you have it or you don't. It's a weird thing. Like, you know, I noticed that too. Like, I guess I never was meant to be a bass player because. Um, like uh, now, I play the bass with people, and I'm like, you know what? I, I really suck. You know, like I can't do it. Like I, I'm just like I don't even I, I don't even attempt to play bass anymore because it's it's pretty hard. You just have to. It, it's it's one of those weird things that you just have to know how to do it. I mean, and it comes. I, I don't know. I, I it, like I don't have a feel for it anymore, or I don't think I ever did really. What would you advise to picking up guitar player or picking up bass player? Well, that's a tough one, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, it, I, I don't think I have the credentials to give anybody advice about playing because, like, I learned by accident, and uh, I never really practiced that much, I guess, on guitar. 
Um, and uh, I don't even know, like, you know, like where to begin. Like, you know, it, it's like, you know, uh, I, it's 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 a, it's all like a God-given talent. Like, you know, I, I, I like I, I always talk about like Jeff Beck. You know, like Jeff Beck said, like never practiced. You know, like he he, he just. He, he, it just came from nowhere, you know, like, and, and he even said, like, I, I spent, like, a year, I, you know, we've had to go on tour again, and I, I just played for a day, you know, like, some guys have that gift, like, I have, like, like even know, learning the prong songs to play live, I have to practice fucking crazy amount to, to figure out how to sing and play the songs, I mean, I'm, I'm a slow learner, so uh, I don't have any advice for anybody, it's like, whatever their capabilities are, you know, I mean, you know, some kids are, are amazing, like they, they see something once and they can play it, you know, other guys got to sit there for a month to learn it, you know, I don't know. If you have a chance to pick a new instrument to learn, what would you pick? Probably piano would be, you know, to learn how to really get around a piano to, a lot, you know. What do you think about the 7 and 8 string guitars? I like them, I mean, like, I, we used them a little bit on the, on the new record, uh, just for, for, for the, uh, the tuning reasons, you know, like, so it was, we were able to, um, you know, uh, go down a half step or something without having to, you know, uh, restring guitars and everything. But I wouldn't, I, I, and I use, like on Belief System, uh, I, I use the seven string on that. I was going to ask you about it. Yeah. And that was like, you know, I went into Schechter and I was like, hey, you know, can you give me a seven string? And they gave me a seven string and I was like, I, I can't wait to play this thing. And I went down to my studio and, uh, you know, I put on the iPhone recorder and uh, I recorded a whole, I just went on there and just fucking came up with all, I'm like, ah, yeah, a couple of riffs. And then, um, you know, like a couple of weeks later, um, we listened to them and then uh, and we're like, that one's cool. So we made a song out of it, you know? So, I mean, it's inspirational. You know, sometimes to get on a, on a new guitar or a, a new, you know, like eight strings too much, but a seven string is cool. But like, you know, uh, uh, it is a limitation doing it live because like I come over from America, I just bring two guitars and, you know, but there's ways around it now, like using, you know, like a Kemper or, you know, a, a, you know, the Axe Effects. I just, you could, you could actually detune a half a step and it doesn't sound too bad. So we could probably get away with it. A whole step, maybe. I mean, it's something that we look into. What kind of strings do you use? The gauges uh, on on a, a D to D with prong. It's uh, 56, 46, 36, 18, 15, and 11. It's pretty heavy. What brand do you prefer? Dunlop. Dunlop, right? Yeah. That's your passion. How many tools do you share with us? Uh, I well, the only thing that comes to mind immediately because we're in Budapest is when I was with Ministry and uh, I saw that. That's why I'm like I saw this city already because we drove around for like at least three hours trying to find this hotel because our road manager, we came from Prague and he was completely wasted on absinthe and uh, he was in another dimension. This guy, so uh, he was like, and we drew all over him in magic marker and. He was in the bunk, so we no one knew where we were going. So we were driving around Budapest, like looking for the hotel, and then then we're like, we finally found it, and uh, we said we told him, you got to go check in the hotel. And he came up, and he was completely naked except for, uh, for his underwear, and he went in the. Um, into the hotel, and we were like, he, he didn't even know he had magic marker all over him. We went into the hotel, and then we just looked, and like these two bouncers had him, and they threw him out onto the sidewalk. So that was my big memory from Budapest at that time. It was like, it was bad. I mean, we, we should never do that to somebody, but uh, that's how ministry was, how we operated. We just fuck with people all the time. Do you have any message to your fans? Well, I appreciate your support, and you know, check out uh, prongmusic.com for um, tour dates, and uh, hit me up on Twitter, which is Prong Music, and then hit me up on uh, uh, the Facebook page, Facebook Prong. Thank you very much for Thanks, man. Appreciate it.